Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are looking at a, another generic card that is actually coming up pretty soon here. This is New Clear World. It's a normal spell coming in Battle of Chaos, which we're gonna be getting in like less than a month and a half or somewhere like about a month and a half now. And um, it's a card that I haven't seen many people talking about, but it's another one of those generic, just kind of like good spell cards that uh, a, a good amount of decks may be able to take advantage of. Um, and this card helps a little bit with certain decks consistency as well as their ability to play into uh, Interaction, uh, which is really cool. So um, We're gonna go over the card real quick and then we'll talk about some decks that might want to play it as well as just some of the, the other targets that like are interesting with this card so First and foremost, uh, we got to talk about some shenanigans here. We've got our effect. This is new clear world. It's obviously a normal spell. You can only activate one per turn. Its effect reads target one face up monster you control. Destroy it. And if you do, special summon from your deck in defense position one monster with a different, different original type, attribute, and has a lower original level, but its effects are negated. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. Destroying a monster on your field, summoning something different. It's got to be a different type, attribute, lower level, and don't forget its effects are negated. So this card is definitely balanced. Hard once per turn, you're negating the monster you're summoning, and you have to give up a monster on the field to get there. But I do think in the confines of the right archetype, this really works. So the synergy we are looking for here, obviously, are one, to work with the first part of the effect, uh, we're looking for a deck that actually wants to destroy its own monsters. Decks that get value, float off of their monsters, at least being destroyed or even sent, and, and making up that immediately immediate value of, of losing the monster but replacing it immediately and moving on from there. Secondly, we are looking for a, uh, a deck that can play a target, or at least just generically decent targets to be able to be summoning off of this card. Uh, so like something that works well with the type attribute of the deck you're playing it in, but low level usually is going to be better. You know, I'm assuming three and lower is probably what we're looking for, but there might be some other targets that theoretically in certain decks could still work, but becomes a little bit more specific. Uh, but also don't forget its effects on field are negated. So we're not really looking for anything that has an effect on the field. We're more so looking for low level monsters that have good effects in grave. So yeah. There we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's start off with a couple of archetypes that I think are really interesting with this card. First and foremost, I think this might be the number one, uh, the one that comes to mind at least. Unchained, every single monster in the entire archetype floats when they are destroyed. Um, all of the smaller Unchained monsters in the main deck are summoning another Unchained monster straight from the deck. So it's not even like adding you something, you're just straight up summoning another one, which is crazy. Um, even the Lynx uh, lets you summon back from Grave, and even the big monsters have float effects as well uh, from the main deck. So uh, really, really good. You just get insane value, just lets you play around stuff. And again, if you're gonna summon another monster, you're still gonna get another in chain. You're gonna be able to potentially extend from there. I just think about playing into boards and being able to go like, pop my own Aruha or something. Maybe I could summon a Sarama. They negate the Sarama with like a targeting negation because they don't want to negate and destroy. Then we can use near clear world to pop Sarama to summon another monster from deck. And then we still get to use Sarama to get to the big dog in the main deck and then use his effect to like link off with the opponent's monster. So we're playing an interaction pretty well. You get that other monster, whatever that monster is, and then we'll see what, you know, what other good targets there are that could possibly work there. But uh, yes, yeah, synergy is definitely good there. Another one is definitely Yang Zing. Uh, I'd love to see Denglong come off the ban list. That would make this even more interesting in this deck for sure. But yeah, same thing. Literally every monster in the main deck for this archetype pretty much says if it's destroyed, summon another one from deck. They've got tuners, they've got non-tuners, they've got different stats, they've got different protections and stuff if they're used for synchro material. There's definitely some good stuff going on here. I've always been a fan of Yang Zing's and I think this card could be a potential like engine pusher. Uh, for them at least like a pure variant. It'd be pretty cool Next up is zombies uh, Zombies mainly just because they have so many cards that want to be engraved that like Even just normal summon Mizuki pop the Mizuki to summon something like could potentially get you there because you're just trying to get the Mizuki in grave and Depending on what you summon could help put the other monster in grave, but another instance to me was like 
a lot of people who play zombies know that sometimes if you just get impermed or veiled or something on like a noonie zombie, you kind of can just lose sometimes depending on the hand. Um, and so this allows you to go uni, they hit you with the veil or imperm, then you just pop the uni and summon another monster from deck and then just like keep playing. Or even after that, like resolve uni to send one or two cards, then you pop uni and extend it to another monster anyway and just keep it rolling. And you're just like, you're just off to the races at that point. Um, it's really good, I don't know. Uh, so yeah, uh, I thought uni was definitely a pretty cool option there uh, to consider. Moving on here, we get to Goki. This one's a weird one for sure, just because Goki right now are so well known for like their one main staple thing being get to I sold while using a Goki. You know what I mean? Use a Goki as material for I sold. And that's what the deck wants to do. That is full combo essentially, uh, pretty much. And uh, I don't know if this card necessarily helps with that, but it is still interesting with the Goki archetype, right? Because all of them just say if they're sent from field to grave, you get to add another Goki card. That's the problem though, is they're adding Goki cards, they're not summoning them like the Yang Zings, like the Unchains. And so you end up with cards in hand, resources in hand, but like, what are you doing from that point? You know what I mean? So uh, that's really the question there. And I guess it depends on what you're going into. Theoretically, there could still be some plays, especially depending on like the kind of monster you'd be summoning. But um, it's just one of those things, like it, it just depends. It really just depends. But Suprex is good. I mean, and and like just being able to send a Suprex to summon another monster and then you get a search off of Suprex and now you keep going. The only problem is it doesn't fully set up rematch. And I don't know if you even want to be using rematch at that point. You probably want to be using it later on in the combo. So it's maybe one of those things where like maybe if Konami came around and just like released like different spells and traps for Goki, just so you had like actual utility. Like, you know what I mean? What if they just got a trap so that like one Goki could just be like normal a Goki, get it linked off, search a Goki trap, boom, that's an interruption. Uh, maybe that could play a little more controlling. Who knows? But uh, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. I just felt like this archetype definitely had solid synergy there. And I think the last archetype that I talked about that I have here, uh, as far as the main stuff is Shadals. Generally, the Shadal monsters are bricks in the hand a lot of the time, unless you're playing like a pu like a pure trap Shadal variant, in which case seeing them is not the worst. Uh, at least you just don't want to see too many of them. Uh, and so this gives you good value because they all just have effects when they're sent to the graveyard by card effect, and that will be triggered by this card. So send it like normal Squamata, destroy it on the field. Uh, and that gives you Squamata to send another one, which can get you anything you want. You know what I mean? Ariel to get some graveyard banishes, uh, Wendy to just get a summon from deck of, of something else that you want or whatever, uh, while also getting to summon another monster from the deck, uh, which is really clean. So definitely some good stuff there. Uh, I think those are the main archetypes I have here. There's definitely other ones. I thought about like Nephthys and stuff. There's definitely some other archetypes, but these were the main ones that I thought had like legitimate uh synergies there burning abyss but burning abyss with their restrictions still gets weird with like what you're summoning off of the card that like they may not be able to get on the field again anyway so i left that one off but definitely let me know in the comment section your thoughts on any other archetypes that you think might be really interesting uh with this card anyway moving on to some generic targets i want i do want to throw out some targets out there that are just going to be like you know what this card may just be worth playing as a one of in your deck just because of this card why not uh, Backjack, a uh, really cool card. Uh, when he's sent to the graveyard, he lets you look at the top three cards of your deck and put them in any order. And then he can quick effect banish himself on the opponent's turn to uh, excavate the top card of your deck. And if it's, I think it's, if it's a trap, you set it and it can be activated that turn or you're just foolish burying that top card. So it depends on what's, what's in there, but still good. I mean, if you're just playing a, a decent, heavy enough trap deck, boom makes me think of like Unchained, perfect example. Like a lot of, uh, a decent amount of Unchained decks definitely have a decent amount of traps. So that's a pretty good card for them, uh, except that it is Fiend. So unfortunately it is the same type as all of their monsters. So that one doesn't work specifically, but it's like the, the train of thought that you need to be in to find these good targets. Another one is Nightmare Corruptor Ibli. This one is because you can just Ibli lock your opponent, right? As long as you're not destroying a dark or cybers monster, boom, turn out an Ibli, hopefully float with the monster you destroyed, and then link off Ibli, even if it just needs to be for a, you know, a, a Lingariba, right? Now you got a Trap Negate, and Ibli is gonna go to your opponent's field and potentially lock them out of the game. 
which is pretty good, I hear. <laughs> uh, next up is Sangan. Uh, again, another weird one, Dark Fiend does actually clash with the decent amount of decks that will work with this, but if it can work and your deck plays a lot of level fours that aren't Dark and aren't Fiend, this card's a really good one, because if you can just get him on the field and link him off for anything, he can search half of the cards in the game, like literally. He searches any monster with 1500 or less attack, uh, but you just can't activate its effects this turn. So even just being able to go like, hmm, I'll just go ahead and grab Ash Blossom. Droll in a matchup that loses to Droll, right? Failure, right? Even just to bolster up your board while you've already been extending with the other stuff you've been doing with Clear World. So good target if it fits, but it's gotta fit. That's the, that's the question. Uh, in the same vein, Witch of the Black Forest, I know she's higher level. That's really her main problem is you'd have to be destroying something higher than level four. But the, there are decks out there. I mean, I didn't list any specifically that are like, ooh, that's a perfect example of a high level deck that you want to be destroying uh, a monster for. But if she fits, same thing as Sangan. She searches half of the cards, half of the monster cards in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! So if you can take advantage of her, you tr probably should. Um, and she's also a spellcaster, so you can even normal summon her and just link her off for, uh, or not even normal summon her, but uh, link her off for the Magistus Link 1 and just trigger her anyway. Whereas Sangate, if he's summoned from the deck, I don't think there's any Link 1s that he can make. Uh, so that's a nice little bonus as well. Another one might be Carboneton. I don't love Carboneton because you have to play not only him, but you have to play another brick in the deck but from grave he can just banish himself to summon a uh, level seven or lower dragon normal monster uh which is cool but again you'd have to play him and another brick just to have this but it's a cool little extender card and it's earth dino so it is different attribute type from a lot of things so this one might be a little more applicable to some of those uh dotscaper is another one uh when he just hits the graveyard he immediately reborns himself and on a separate turn if he's ever banished he reborns himself again uh, so he's just extra link material. So that's just like, if you're just playing a generic link deck, then maybe Dotscaper is something uh, to look at just because he's you, like, you summon him, use him as link material, get him back. Maybe on a later turn, get him back again. Uh, it's a pretty good card. I like this card a lot. <clears throat> One of my favorite targets here though, Four Mud Skipper. This card's kind of interesting, uh, really cool. Uh, so this card has an on-field effect where it can, you can like reveal a link monster in your extra deck and then it'll like copy its, what is it? It copies its name, type, and attribute if it were to be used as link material. Um, but its other effect just says if it's ever just sent to the graveyard as link material, you can add a level five or higher Cybers monster from deck to hand. So there's like another Cybers monster, uh, I can't remember its name right now, but it just like banishes a Cybers to Grave to summon itself. So theoretically, if you just go like pop a monster to summon four mud, you just, it just seems to be not light, not Cybers, not the hardest thing in the world. Then you can link him off with whatever the other monster you summoned was, or the other monster you might've floated into was, and then use four mud skipper's effect in Grave to grab yourself a, the, the guy who extends, drop him on the field, and you know you're just kind of linking up at that point and you can kind of go into some pretty cool things from there there's just decent generic links out there it depends on the deck you're playing of course but that's something that's pretty interesting to me i think this is one of the more interesting ones again you do have to play like probably one more brick to make it worth or you play something like Par parallel exceed if you're expecting to still be able to extend and link again with an open zone maybe you search parallel exceed and just like go for a higher ceiling play who knows uh, Doomdog Octhorus, this is an interesting one, but I think it depends more on future support. If this guy is sent to the graveyard, uh, if they are sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add a level 8 Fiend from deck to hand, but again, another Dark Fiend, so it uh, doesn't work with some of these decks. But if we ever got like some really good generic level 8 Fiends, like this card becomes really interesting to me. And the last card is Residence Insect, uh, just because there are a couple of generic ones. A uh, Sting Lancer just being like actually a decent card, <laughs> interruption wise, uh, as well as stuff like uh, the 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 two insect kaiju's that this card can search. So there's definitely some cool utility here, uh, just to be able to summon this card out of the deck, link it off, get a search. There you go. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know how applicable it is, but it is definitely a card that's like it's a target, and it's level four, so like the level's not great, but like what are you gonna do? Figured it was worth mentioning anyway so 
there you go uh just some interesting thoughts on nuclear world i think this card's really worth taking a look at i think that there will be very specific and i don't think it's as generic as small world i don't think it's as generic as um oh my gosh why do i feel like i i'm blanking on this because we just had a, another recent card that I talked about like this that's generic i can't even remember it right now but whatever uh we've had some other cards that are a little more generically applicable to a couple different decks oh piri rice map that's what i'm thinking of um it's going to be very niche for the decks it works in but I, I think there could be a handful of them so let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts what decks do you think could actually see this card uh, actually be like a really nice piece of of help um i'd be curious to hear your thoughts definitely let me know down below uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, subscribe for more if you want to see that from me. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.